All right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to T3G. This is the Tangents Podcast, and today uh, we're doing... I don't know what we're doing, actually. This is this is a surprise for me. Uh, I woke up and my wife said, hey, I have a podcast idea. Don't go on Facebook. Yeah. So that's as much as I know w- what you got for me, my love. Fixing my hair because I'm vain. Okay. I didn't, I didn't say anything. So... Um, I am a middle-class white woman with some power and opinions. And I, don't, I don't know about power, but definitely opinions. Lots some of opinions. Some power. Some power. <laughs> Lots of opinions. So many opinions. But, uh, so I wanted to have a discussion with you about, um, I guess it would kind of maybe be like, uh, gender disparity to a degree. Okay. And I, and I wanted to sort of just organically get your, you, so... I didn't want you to go on Facebook yet because I kind of sort of was called out about something, but oh. your name was brought up. Oh. So I wanted to see what your thoughts regarding this you, were. You are in luck because I almost, dude, I, I end up with like 30 notifications before I check any of them. <laughs> so I don't know well, what you you're talking tagged. about. Well, you weren't You weren't tagged in anything. Oh, I see. I posted. That's fine. I posted something. That had nothing to do with anything, in my opinion, except for the immediate thing at hand. Sure. And then, you know, a lot of people were like, I agree. A lot of women were like, I agree, because it was about things that a lot of women experience. Okay. And then a man came on and As they do. opinions as, as well. As they do. <laughs> but also, as those men do. But also, like, brought you and our relationship kind of sort of into it. So, okay. and so I didn't, one, I didn't want you to know who it was Okay. and I didn't want you to get involved in it yet. So I just wanted to get your, and this is from today, right? This is from this morning, okay. I believe. So I just kind of wanted to get your knee jerk reaction to stuff. Okay. Um, and so I do want to first like asterisk this with the fact that this, um, this conversation is probably mostly going to center around, um, experiences of women but also like let's say heteronormative uh relationships particularly marriage i suppose okay and also deal with like ingrained misogyny kind of sort of so like there's there's other things that you can bring into like it being called out here there no i mean there's other things you can bring into it but that just it didn't happen to be part of the conversation at sure. this time okay and and we can we can obviously like draw comparisons and contrasts to other issues. Um, so what you're saying is we could probably go on tangents? We can go on tangents, <laughs> yes. So I thought this would be perfect for tangents. So like I said, I wanted to, I wanted to like uh, kind of tell you uh, what the post was, what the immediate responses were, what this particular response was, what some of the responses to the responses were, but then I also had this person who is a man brought mm-hmm. up some points that I don't want to discredit okay because they were i think valid points so curious i know so we'll just we'll get into it so just go the initial post okay was that um a man on twitter by the name of um aaron hoyland hoyland something like that uh said is she being rude or have you been socially conditioned into believing that women should be warm positive and friendly at all times and are uncomfortable when they don't adhere to that behavior Okay, so I actually I didn't see you post that. I saw somebody post that yesterday. A few people have been posting. Yeah, so it. I saw I did see that image. I I had thoughts on that image right out the gate. Uh, I didn't comment. Right. Um, I hadn't seen you comment about it. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I it was kind of a situation where I I did not feel like I I felt the point was being made, mm-hmm. and then any additional point was a different conversation. Okay, so besides any additional point being made, how how do you, as a man, feel in general about that it's true. statement? It's true. Okay, why do you say that, or why do you, well, I guess? Uh, because uh, from fucking birth, girls are taught to be nice and kind, and to to share, and boys are taught to take charge, and and you know, claim ownership of shit and I mean, hell, even, even marriage yeah. you know, to bring that up, like even marriage is like a, 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 a ownership 
transaction, like like back to its origins. So like, yeah, I mean, I think it's true. The 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 other thing that I was gonna bring up that, like I said, I didn't I didn't comment. Whoever po- I don't remember who I saw post it. I didn't bring it up because I saw I thought um, it was kind of a like a non sequitur. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's a related point, but it's it would it would detract from the point being made. Okay. Uh, and I think that that is that all people should be conditioned to be kind. Mm-hmm. And I think the problem lies on both ends. Well, again, really not not on both ends, but a little, the problem lies on the, the male side of things is that um, boys are not taught to be warm and, and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like warm, warm and, ki- yeah, warm and, and kind. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they're just not. They're not. Like, they're punished if they're mean. Yeah. But I don't know that they're, and I don't, obviously, different family dynamics are going to be different. Different parents teach differently. But from what I've seen, boys are punished for being mean. Mm-hmm. So they, they know that there's an upper limit to what they do. Right. But I, but girls are taught to be nice right and i think we can asterisk that with most of the stuff that you and i are going to say are generalizations it's not going to be the same for every case but i think just like as far as society expects or how people have been brought up what you and i will discuss here would be um things that more often than not are true yeah um yeah i definitely agree with that i think um I think women are, you know, you're taught to be like acquiescent and nice and you don't want to rock the boat and you don't want, and I think women are told too, like you don't want to hurt people's feelings. And right. so it's, um, and I think also a lot of women, uh, I do see things getting better and I see boys being taught to be more in tune with their emotions. Um, but I still think that even some people that are teaching their kids to be in tune with their emotions are still giving other contradictory uh, information to them, I guess. You could be like, oh, you know, you like, it's okay to cry. Crying's a natural reaction to stuff. Right. But then sometimes people will still say stuff like, man up. <laughs> right. Or, or even you might be like, you know, you have to be nice to girls. But then you might be hearing from your father or your uncle or even other women disparaging other women. And that's kind of like a contradictory of what they're being taught. So that's a little bit dif- difficult, I guess. For sure. Yeah. So, okay. I like where this is going. But <laughs> so then um, where, you, where you were kind of sort of brought into it was uh, a person who is a man. Said, You're not going to tell me who it is until I, until I see it on Facebook later, are you? Yeah, because I don't want you okay. to... I just kind of want to see what your reaction to the reaction I can tell is. you right now that I have three guesses already, <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll wait yeah. to tell you my guesses. I'm going that. to try not to put any like uh, specific inflection on this, because I don't know what their state of mind was when they responded sure. to it. Well, so like, I will say that when I read it, my jerk reaction was kind of like... It was like eye roll, basically. Right. But... Um, I don't know if they were, I guess, being aggressive or just trying to call out the disparity that they saw or I don't know. But uh, they said, ew, this kind of goes both ways. And I believe there is more social conditioning towards making a guy feel of less worth than a female. Have you seen advertising? Most men can't cook, can't clean, can't take care of their children live in their parents' basement and play video games. That's the social expectation of a male because it's funny. Only to emphasize a point, but you yourself have a GD, goddamn, Dalibor segment, where you will sometimes criticize his shortcomings or misunderstandings. I'm sure he's fine with it, but it solidifies the notion in people's heads that it's okay to make fun of your man. I have a son, and I want him to find a wife that will build him up, not tear him down for the sake of the funnies. Sorry to step on toes, but gotta speak up, right? Even old white guys can have a voice. Fuck, I'm not gonna lie to you. That that, that blew out every single guess I had. <laughs> none of none of the guesses I had had sons. Uh, now I have two, maybe, maybe two. Yeah. So, um, I, what is your So that was kind of a lot to take in, but I suppose what is your what is your reaction to that reaction? I mean, I, I think it's 
it, it, it it's similar to um I, I guess similar to to my thoughts but i think it's more so a point of like a defensive point mm-hmm. uh like clearly they have they they are having some sort of thing that they they feel like needs to be addressed um and i don't disagree i think that there are situations where uh i mean like there is there is a a, a, a concerning uh, growing movement of uh, people saying let's normalize women hitting men back. Right. And I'm like, mm, let's just not let's just normalize people not hitting each other. Right. Right. Let's 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 avoid the problem instead of like oh escalate. Well, yeah. Like let, let, <laughs> let's just get into a fight. Well, yeah. No, that's not where we want to go with this. Uh, so I think that there is. I mean, again, I don't think this is, like, prevalent. I don't think it's a huge thing. Yeah. I think it's visible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I, like, going through those examples of, oh, um, have you seen marketing, like, men can't do this, men can't do that. I don't know what they're talking about because I've seen commercials where the man is cooking. I've seen commercials where the dad is taking care of the kids. Like, I feel like that's a newer thing, though. Like, it's not to say it never existed. Sure. But I will say, um, so, like, my response, so, first of all, I, the, the reason that I rolled my eyes was not because I thought that anything he was saying was inherently incorrect. Mm-hmm. It was more that... It was, um, as other people pointed out, it was kind of like a not all men statement and it detracted from the main point. Like that was not the point. Yeah, that's where I was going. And so I guess the question is, because these are valid concerns. Sure. I definitely have seen what he's talking about. And so I guess the next question would be, where where is the point at which it's maybe appropriate to like... uh, like dump so much of that kind of questioning or detraction or whatever you want to call it versus like continuing the conversation or bringing it up because it is important but it does still detract from the main point and that's why i didn't comment yeah um when i saw it last night um i felt like like i said i it's kind of like time and place for everything mm-hmm. um you once you're on uh, like once you're trying to do something if you're like all right i'm gonna i don't know i'm gonna fucking clean the i'm gonna i'm gonna do the driveway i'm gonna sh- shovel the driveway yeah and then you're like oh but you know what while i'm in the garage i gotta do this other thing by the way while i'm you know while i'm doing this other thing i forgot i need to like i've got a baseboard that i need to finish up so like if I if I'm trying to do all of these like all of these are valid things that need to be done. Right. But like like you set out to do this one thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't jump on something else. So it's like it's the same thing in this conversation is the point is being made and the point is valid. The conversation can continue about this point. This is a different conversation. This is an in addendum to. Yeah. Hey, this is a thing and we have discussed this thing and that could have been a separate post on his own page saying, hey, so I saw this being brought up. I also wanted to bring up this mm-hmm. separately. Right. Because uh, there is, there, like, for instance, there is absolutely a conversation to be had for, I'm going to use a term and the, the broad understanding of this term is very uh, neg- negative connotation, but men's rights yeah there is a conversation to be had about that in terms of like parental uh parental rights and right. and you know emotional stability yeah th- yeah and... exactly like there, there is a conversation to be had there yes but not in response to a conversation about misogyny right and especially <laughs> like, like i mean because like well so like when you say men's rights i mean there is a men's rights movement which i feel is incredibly like I don't even, I can't even think of a word for it. Like, That's why I couldn't, I didn't like, Yeah, but I, it, I wanted to generalize yeah. it without like. No, but I mean like usually when you say men's rights, and it's not even a quotation, like there are people who are fighting for legitimate stuff like parental rights because right. it tends to be given to the mother right. regardless of what the situation is. Although you can also argue that sometimes it favors the father if he has more money. So it's not fair. It's not a fair system. And there's, there's inequality within that. But a lot of the people who, 
go for like the men's rights stuff tend to be like basically seem like angry that women have come to the re realization that they deserve more than they've yeah. had and that they <laughs> don't have to necessarily rely on a man or a partner or anything to get what they want in life and they seem to be really salty about it yeah it, it it's it's kind of a compounding problem right yeah. it's so there is a situation of the the post that you made and how women historically have been conditioned to to behave a certain type of way and to be a certain type of way like you said acquiescing like you know uh, soft and kind and you know basically doing for their man yeah uh and now that we have come to an era where women are just doing their own fucking thing mm -hmm. and not dedicating their fucking lives to being subservient to a man uh there are people who there are men who are brought up that Women are stay in the kitchen. Women mm -hmm. rear the children, uh, and they don't know how to deal with that. Right. They don't know how to, you know, people coming out of certain classes and certain areas are coming into the into the real world, and they're like, oh shit, it's not like this everywhere. Right. It's, it's you know, like their mother may have seemed, let's say, that she was happy in her role as homemaker. And, and, you know, children, like taking care of the children and, and cooking and cleaning, all of the things. But they don't know that. Right. They don't know what the situation was. That might have been just the only option. That might have been at the time kind of a, hey, I was a teenager and I got pregnant. And the only way I was going to get through this was to stay home and cook and clean and take care of the children right so like it's it, they they saw what they think is the right way and now they're in a situation where they're trying to find someone perhaps and these women are out here independent doing their own thing yeah and not looking to go and clean and cook and raise children well and i think a large part of it too is that a lot of women are um i do see it changing but i feel like a lot of women have been socialized as to a kind of you should take what you can get if you're not necessarily the prettiest if if a guy gives you attention you should run with it yeah um i like i don't believe there's anything inherently wrong with wanting gender roles within your relationship if that's what you want like there's plenty of men who want to be like manly men and they do the work and the wife saves home and cooks and cleans and there are women out there who want to do that that's not for me but like if you want to do it, go for it. Just don't expect other people to right. want that. And I see a lot of men seeming to get angry that um, more often than not, I guess they're not doing well because more and more women aren't interested in it. But that's not to say there aren't any. And it seems like they're just angry because they, I guess they've been barking up the wrong tree or or, ha or like their their options have diminished and they don't understand. But he, here, here's my here's here's a thought I just had. I don't recall ever seeing a man portrayed in media, in person, whatever. I've never heard a man in any context mm -hmm. discuss settling. They get what they want. They get what they're looking for. Mm. Women, I've heard in many conversations, in person, people I know and people in media, there have been conversations of, oh, I settled. Right. This, you know, this is not the man I wanted. This is the man I got. Yeah. Okay, and that. so what you're getting is the men that women used to settle for aren't getting anything anymore. Yeah, that's very <laughs> Now true. women have demands and wants and needs yeah. that they would like met. <laughs> well, and I think too, especially because um, there definitely is still a glass ceiling, I believe. And that, you know, if women are uh, go-getters and trying to better themselves, you do have a lot of people that are like, She's bossy. She's a bitch. She's, you know, manipulative. She's cold. Um, they'll put all this stuff in place. But I think a lot of women who, so like my great aunts were educated at a time when it was not traditional to educate women. Like it wasn't the norm at right. all. And so, and they recognized that too. Like one of my great aunts always said, 
um, like money's freedom. Because if you have money, you can do your own things. You don't have to rely on another person right. to provide that for you. You don't have to worry about like what's going to happen to you. And and I think part of it is that um, women might have traditionally, as you brought up, like they're looking for maybe the protection and the stability because they had to. Right. But now it's like you know if if you don't want to deal with the potential bullshit of a guy who might uh, belittle you or get abusive with you or call you out on things that you don't care about because you're like, I'm me and I want to be me, then if you're not doing the role of like the cooker and the cleaner, you now have the money to hire people to do that. So like, why would you want to put up with a part? Like, it doesn't even have to be a man, but in general, like, why would you want to put up with a partner who would be like, I don't like these things you're doing. Right. You need to do these things I want when you could just be like, well, I'm going to go do what I want and I have the money to, like, I don't have to clean my house. I'll hire someone to clean it. Right. So I think that's a big part of it now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think it's, uh, ah, damn, I, I had a thought and I lost it. Um, but no, I think, I think it's a situation where, uh, you, yeah, I think you, you're, you have women, gaining in like true independence mm -hmm. um and i think that's that's kind of the the climb of any uh, no nah, any oppressed group mm -hmm. anywhere that is the climb is the financial independence um and to to make a a comparison uh not to say they're equivalent but to say just a similar response uh, when black people gain financial independence in Tulsa, uh, white people burn that shit down. Oh, yeah. Because they were like, mm, we don't like the way this is going. So in the modern times, you can't just burn down women's businesses. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so then women are being attacked in terms of uh, belittled and, and made fun of. And, right. and just like, oh, you know, it's... It, it, I, I just see a lot of bad behavior uh, in terms of women talking about their success. Mm -hmm. um, I see it on the microcosm. Like I see it on TikTok a lot. Uh, I come across uh, women who are like perfectly knowledgeable in their shit, right? They, right. They're talking about Star Wars or they're talking about, I'm in, a, I'm in nerd TikTok. So like, <laughs> that's where I'm at. Uh, but like they're talking about Star Wars, they're talking about Marvel and they have very deep, like, interesting thoughts on these subjects. And then you, there's men that are like, bruh, bruh, you know, it's just like, I don't even like. Show the us your tits. Not even that. <laughs> now, honestly, not even that. <laughs> but you that. do see that. But it's just like, hey, there is that to a point, And I see those are, those are like rare. Okay. Because that is, there is a TikTok side for that. There is a side of TikTok for that. So I think a lot of those people end up there. But they're, they, the people that are on, on you know, the nerd TikTok are playing gatekeeper like oh you don't know what you're talking mm -hmm. about oh we, like what's your what's your nerd cred where where are your books where like yeah. how how many comics have you read like the kind of the kind of validation no one's ever fucking asked of me right no oh, one's yeah. ever asked me to validate my nerd cred <laughs> but i just see it happen all the fucking time on on tiktok With i follow women. i follow yeah. a lot of female creators like i said they have very interesting thoughts this is, I don't know what kind of thought this is, but it is a thought. Many of the men that I follow have some surface level th shit that they're talking about in the, in the space of comics and nerddom. Many of the women that I follow have deeper, more intricate, and more, more broad subject matter thoughts about these subjects. Right. So, like, they're talking about, uh, like, the, the, the fact that Star Wars is about toxic masculinity. And when you look at it and explain, like... The way they explain it, I'm like, that makes perfect fucking sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, you know, that was made fucking 50 years before toxic masculinity existed as a term. Yeah. So, like, it, it's just very interesting stuff. So, but then because they're talking about this stuff, because they talk about these more in-depth things, you have men asking, well, what's your cred? You've never even watched it. I think blah, a lot blah, of blah. times they want more to discredit a person yeah. than to like reflect on what's like even like even if you wanted to disagree with the person is saying i feel like they automatically like put up a wall yep. and they're like i'm not even gonna listen so i have prepared holy shit some notes because <laughs> i and some of these i think we've already touched on 
But I just, I had some questions For based, sure. based on comments that went into this, because it went back and forth with a few people. Um, he, to some degree, the, the man who made that uh, comment, uh, he, he recognized what other people were saying, but he also kind of like doubled down on his thing as well. So it just sort of like went back and forth a little bit. Um, before I forget, I want to remember. I want to remember this before I forget because um, I don't remember if I made notes on it. But a big point that a lot of uh, women brought up was that while his points are valid. Um, it kind of is making, it's trying to make a comparison between the difference of, and this does get into psychological stuff with men, so I will say it is deeper than just the superficial, you know, guys are being showed as being bumbling, but they were like, um, you can't really compare, oh, my feelings are hurt that they made fun of me for being a guy right. versus you're kind of like you're calling us like rude or not taking guys feelings into consideration when we're telling you that part of the reason that we are being rude is because we have to as a defense mechanism because if you don't give certain men the type of day they will kill you so right yeah so that was the thing so i just wanted to make that point but so um so I think you, you already kind of answered this, but I'll ask it again. Do you believe men have been socially conditioned to expect women to be welcoming of unwanted advances? Uh, no, but I'll tell you why. I don't think men have been socially conditioned to expect women to be welcoming of unwanted advances. I think men have been socially conditioned to disregard what women want. Mm -hmm. To... They, I think men have been socially conditioned by and large to show up peacock. Here is my nice, here are my nice things. Here is my expensive watch. Here is my fancy job. Here are nice words. Exactly. Here, here are the fancy things I can say to win, mm -hmm. to win the affections of a woman. It's not, it's very much a matter of it's, the, the the wants and needs and expectations of a woman are not really taken into consideration in terms of that. Yeah. I don't even think that men necessarily peacock that much, but I've found that in... Well, no, I mean, I, they, do, <laughs> they do, but okay, but I do think that there are... I think that men don't necessarily realize that women can tell the difference between if a conversation is happening organically over something they noticed versus them trying to strike up a conversation or make a statement about you because they want something more. Right. I feel my experience has been more often than not that if a man is trying to strike up a conversation with you as a stranger, they want something. Yeah, it, I think it depends on the social context. Like, if, if you're in a bar, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're, I mean, if you were to be, I don't know, to use the examples that I know, it'd be if you're at a comic shop, um, that could be a genuine, like, oh, I'm really into this thing, oh, or yeah. you think about it, or whatever. But that's, again, I think that's really social, like, social context specific, because mm -hmm. if you're at Best Buy, and you're both, like, drooling over the same computer... That might be like a conversation starter. Right. You you both might be married, mm -hmm. but that just might be an interest point. Right. You know, like I, like I'm married, but I've had great conversations about computer shit with Karen, because Karen's really fucking knowledgeable about her shit. Mm -hmm. So like that that was just it's rare for me to have those conversations in general. Right. So like men or women. Or so like, yeah. Or I could see. I think sometimes men don't give women the credit that we are able to tell the difference. Because for example, sometimes when I'm working at the brewery. Like there was one time I was wearing a shirt that was for the um, Kielbasa Festival okay. in Minneapolis and a dude came in and I was selling him beer and then he just happened to like look at my shirt, which was on my chest, but he wasn't like checking me out. Um, he just saw my shirt and was like, oh, I went there this summer. That was a really cool thing. And so like I felt that that was like an organic, He, w I didn't feel he was looking for anything. Right. It just kind of happened. We had our conversation. He left. Right. But there are people that would use that as like an in and then 
uh, you can be giving like all the clues that you're not that interested. Right. Or even being like, without getting rude or blunt, you can show that you're not interested and they just don't get it. I don't know. They'll keep pursuing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, again, that's that, that goes to, to the point I made earlier is that I think men are taught to just kind of pursue until they win. Yeah. I don't know. I'll be honest. I, I've never seen a situation where someone has backed down without it getting rude. Yeah. Without it getting like, no, dude. For real, though, no. And that's the problem because it really shouldn't get Absolutely to not. Absolutely not. And then the onus is like on you that like you're the bitch or whatever because either you weren't interested or you became rude. Right. Um, but I do. I think it was something I heard on NPR. I wish I could remember what, what it was in regards to, but there was a study that was done. And it's some of it I'm wondering like what part of it is the conditioning of like men win, keep pursuing. Because there, there is that um, I think a lot of women have been taught like you have to play hard to get because you don't want a man to think you're easy. So like, even if you're interested, you shouldn't show it because they'll think you're loose. Right. Um, so there is something to be said for that. Like there is kind of, you know, like the, the fun of the pursuit to a degree, but some people take it too far. And they were, they were talking with it where um, there's kind of like um, body language you can do to show like if you're open to someone or if you're closed off or if you're just like kind yeah. of hesitant and so they were showing that uh men were trying to flirt with women and the women were in the person who was reporting this giving off clear uh signals that they weren't interested without saying they weren't interested right where it was kind of like they were trying to conf the man was trying to continue the conversation and the woman was like trailing it off and trying to change the subject or like turning or like you know oh, that's cool, like, let me get back to my drink. But the men would just keep going. Right. And it was hard to tell, I guess it's hard to tell what part of that is maybe conditioning that you should keep pursuing or what part of it is that they are just completely unaware. Yeah, I mean, that, that is going to be a hard distinction to make. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it is um, conditioning. I think it's, like I said, I think it just goes to the, pursue until you win mm -hmm. mentality uh but i think there is also a, a severe lack of understanding body language in general in our society yeah. um yeah i mean i think in, in those specific situations i think it does very much fall on men um i think women are because they are taught to be more aware of people's feelings and emotions uh they are aware of body language more clearly mm -hmm. um so if if a woman were to approach a man and he were to turn around she'd be like ouch and walk away right i don't i don't i don't foresee a, a situation broadly speaking mm -hmm. that a woman would be like just pushing that point yeah i'm sure it's happened but it's that would be the exception to the rule in, in, in my opinion right whereas the other way around i think men more often than not continue pursuing after it's been very clear that they're not interested yeah and i think part of the problem too is that you have some men that are like well i wish women would just be up front and say what they're thinking or you know whatever but i i find that sometimes you will run into men that would be like oh you know i hope i'm not bothering you and as a woman your typical response isn't to be like yeah, dude, I was reading my book. You're fucking rude. Why did you interrupt me? Like, I don't even know you. Like, that's not, I mean, that's kind of, you know, maybe what's in your head, but you're not going to say it because that is kind of rude and I don't necessarily condone rudeness. But at the same time, um, even if you just were like, yeah, I'm busy, some will get angry and escalate. And you don't know who will or won't. Right, right. And that's, that's, it, it's, it's a hard, that's a hard line. And I, I wish there was a way to just like broadcast to all men, like, mm -hmm. hey, maybe just let it the fuck go. Yeah. Like, I think there is the, 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 the first of all, the concept of, oh, you want, you want to play hard to get because he, he might think you're, you're, you're loose or easy or whatever. Uh, that's a silly fucking thing to begin with. I think right. that that leads to situations where 
men then think, oh, she's playing hard to get. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and the lack of understanding of body language. So a woman might politely smile and turn away and they might read that as coy smile, interested, I'm going to keep going. Right. And then that just, yeah, it just builds on each other and it, it turns into a mess. I, I think because we have been socially taught throughout history to like have to like play these little games for whatever reasons, I think that's caused a lack of honesty and communication. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I, I like personally, I mean, obviously fiction is fiction, but like the, the situations like I never wa- I, I, like when I'm watching a movie, I don't like seeing a situation where a man is just like beating a dead horse as it were, like clearly not interested move on with your life. Right. I like situations where, you know, whoever's the main character, dude walks up and she's like, not interested. And he's like, ouch, walks away. And then like, he goes back to his table with his buddies and he's like shot down and they give him a little hard time. And we all move on with our lives right. because like everyone's happy in that scenario. Cause she's not wasting her time. He's not wasting his time. And, and nobody's being harassed. Yeah. Like, I like that better. <laughs> like We like uh, the one that has less harassment. Yeah, I like the situation where there is no, there's no harassment and there's no, yeah. there's no just, like, unnecessary conflict. Like, if we were just more honest, hey, I like you. I think you're pretty. I'd like to have a conversation with you. No, thank you. Right. Have a good day. Right. I <laughs> like, think that's the thing. I did see there was there was a man that posted something one time where it was kind of like, you know, that guys now are saying, oh, with all these like new rules and, you know, gender confusion and whatever, I don't, I can't even talk to a woman. I will be accused of sexual harassment. And this guy made this list of kind of like, you know, you don't seem to be listening to women when they say what they do or don't like. So let me as a man tell you some suggestions on how you could pursue women. And it was basically like, you know, don't have an idea of how this is going to go in your mind. Be prepared for them to turn you down. You like just don't have expectations. Don't say. Uh, and, and I feel like this kind of gets into sort of like maybe um, kind of homophobic fears or rhetoric. Um, like homophobia, where a little bit it was like, you know, don't say something to a woman that you wouldn't want a strange man to say to you. And it's sort of like, well, that kind of makes it sound like, you know, strange men shouldn't be talking to other men, which is weird, but but you kind of I don't get, think strange anyone should be talking but, to yeah, anyone. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but like the gist of it is kind of, you know, if, if you were to assume, well, because if women are mostly assuming that if a man is going to speak to them outside of like a business transa- transaction or work or, you know, and sadly or whatever... Then that they're probably the end game that they're looking for is to have a sexual encounter with you, (laughs) then maybe you would consider the type of stuff you say to women if you thought of if somebody that you were not interested in was making, I guess, sexual advances towards you. Right. So I thought that was interesting. It brought up some... I got hit on by a black guy once. Yeah. Uh, Don't know why it was necessary to qualify that. Yeah, did it matter that he was black? Not at all. That was... That was weird. I just met a, a strange, like a stranger. Okay. That was, I don't know why the fuck that was necessary. Uh, social conditioning. Uh, but it was just very much like, hey, I didn't get it right out the get. Like, I didn't catch that he was hitting on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he walked in off the street. Like, we were in like an open, open bar. Yeah. And he walked in off the street to comment on my shirt. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's from this, because it was the Philip DeFranco shirt. Right. I was like, yeah, it's from this, you know, show that I watch on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I was like, super cool. And I was like, yeah, thanks. Because I'm like, who the fuck is this person? Yeah. And he, like, walked away. And my buddy's like, you know, you know, that he was gay. He was hitting on you, right? And I was like, cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I just, like, I didn't get it. But, like, it was very much a matter of, like, opened a conversation. I had no interest in furthering the conversation and he moved on with his day right. and everyone's happy. No, like, yeah, you know, he's not, he's not off somewhere being like, he fucking hates me because this, yeah. that he's probably off living his life. And the thing too, is that like some, some women and some people do like random compliments or do like being pursued by someone. Sure. But not all of them. And so you need to take that into consideration. Right. And so I suppose like, you know, if you, 
if you did happen to like meet someone on a corner and you were like, I like what, well, one of the other things that this man's, that the, the man that was giving tips on how to approach women suggested was like, don't make it about appearance maybe make it make it more indirect so instead of being like you've got a nice ass or like i like your curves it was sort of like you know you've got those jeans like i really like your jeans or you know something like that or you know it's like you got a nice ass i (laughs) thank you but you have to be prepared that you have to be prepared that a person doesn't want a compliment the whore yeah so that's that is a tricky territory, I suppose. Yeah, I, I'm. I was never good at dating. Like internet dating was like sa- salvation for yeah, me because same. I was I was very much like if I'm into it, I'm into it, and I'm just in. <laughs> and until I was told no, right. Um, and very much a matter of like I would just profess my affection <laughs> like repeatedly <laughs> until I was told no. Because I was like, but I like you. Isn't that enough? I uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, that's kind of who I was. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I also had no like self identity really. Like yeah. I was just like I was looking to be defined by having a relationship. Right. Uh, but then uh, internet dating very quickly became an uh, like a I need to understand what I want, mm-hmm. uh, and that's why I, I always like telling the story because we were we went we went on OK Cupid. And I had like three questions on there that I saw the wrong answers to. This wasn't like an opinion matter. This was a incorrect or correct answers. And regardless of how good a profile was, if I got to those questions and they were wrong, I'd be like, I can't deal with someone who thinks the moon is not is bigger than the sun. I can't, I can't do that. Let's (laughs) move on with our lives. So speaking of moving on, because this took longer than I expected, but I like it because these are good conversations um do you believe there okay do you believe i'm gonna uh we'll just these questions are more about like current sure. current events i sure. guess do you believe that currently there's more social conditioning towards making guys feel of less worth than a female social conditioning to make guys feel less worth I'll be honest, that's a little tricky. Yeah. Um, I feel like... I feel like the the there may actually be more... And, uh, and this goes back to oh, no one can make you feel anything. Like, I think it is very much a matter of perception mm-hmm. on the guys. I think there's a lot of marketing and there's a lot of social social movement for the like normalizing of women just doing whatever the fuck they want and right. pursuing shit they like and are interested in and growing as people mm-hmm. uh and i think that there is a, a a section of men that see that as an attack towards them i agree traditionalists i think are gonna look at uh a push for women to go out into the workforce and build a business and all these things as a, an, an attack on their traditional viewpoint of a woman should be at home, uh, you know, raising children, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it's just a matter of traditionalism. Bo, go upstairs. I just, he's getting close to hey, the ham, to the thing. Leave it. Go upstairs. Go on. Couch. Go on. jerk dumb go on um I, th- I yeah i think it's it's a situation where i don't think it's i don't think it's an act i don't think that there's any sort of social push to make men feel less valuable less worth than women but i think that men could be perceiving some of the social push for women to be independent and right. do their own thing as that yeah because they and yeah this is i'm like trying to get to where i was getting where i wanted to get to i think men have been taught historically to be the breadwinner be the one that takes care of the family be like be all these things um and i see kind of this behavior on again tiktok uh, i've come across a few men's pages that are stay-at-home dads mm-hmm. and they love it they cook for their family they take care of the kids and their wife is out doing the job making the money and 
they are getting attacked by men. Right. Like they are getting bullied by men for doing that. Yeah. And yeah, that. because I think it's just a situation where you know you have a segment of men that thinks that their job is to be the the breadwinner and the protector and you know the, the person that goes and makes the money and takes care of the family and there is a movement to make women do that on their own without the need of a man yeah and i think they're just perceiving that as a as an attack on them i think there's a two-parter to this i think one that um i can see why a lot of men would perceive the the a movement for equality as being like a personal attack on them because for example you have all these jobs that typically would have been held by only men and now women are getting into those spaces or have been in those spaces for a little while and are working their way up and i think that like it's not as easy and that's kind of perceived as an attack like like you said like a lot of people don't question men on what you're um like what you bring to the table yeah. or what you can like what your expertise is or why you even should be considered an expert in your field there's just the assumption um and so i think when you so i think as a man when you maybe would have been able to just walk in and be like i'm here being a man and they would hire you and now you like not in all cases but for the most part now like do have to show your work um, I think that that's kind of, I could see why that would be threatening when it shouldn't be. It's can, just... I, can I give you an example on that, please? Yes. Again, TikTok. I do spend a lot of time on TikTok. Uh, I, I flip to, you know, swipe up and I see a woman and it's the comment is when a woman is into tech and makes it her whole personality <laughs> and she's like, well, this is what this TikTok is about. I teach tech stuff and like, specifically that's what this is about yeah. that's not what and, but it's again it's it's that attack because I, I thought about it and i'm like i could have a conversation i could i could tell people that i'm into tech and I'm, I'm tech support and i could have a conversation as high level technological as i want to and no one's going to ask if i have credentials right i could start talking about quantum computing all this shit that i have very surface level knowledge of like very brief bits of information and no one would question me unless they knew more right exactly unless wrong. they were like factually like more informed yeah but more more than more often than not they were not they would not be like where'd you get that how, right. where's your source yeah a woman can't even discuss how to build a computer Without being asked, oh, what's your what's your degree in? Or well, actually, <laughs> like it's it's silly. Um, I think so. The other part to it, besides it being harder for men to just show up and be like, I am here with a penis. What next? Um, I do. <laughs> I'm here with a penis. What next? <laughs> I do think. I I will say that I have seen women be more vocal about being derogatory to towards men in like the past let's say decade um and i think that's just because they have realized that a lot of the stuff that we've been conditioned to accept is bullshit and it keeps con con it keeps going forward and the fact that you have a lot of men who um like actively are fighting it just makes it, them look even that more ridiculous to us oops makes it look more ridiculous to us and that you have men who, instead of actively working to uh, educate or call out men that are acting that way, for focus more. Sorry, I was just checking what they were freaking out about earlier. I'm going to start that again. Please do. Um, I think that you have a lot of women who are uh, aggravated that um, when you call a lot of men out on their bullshit, they double like that they i won't even say double down like they firmly believe that women have women roles and men have men roles and we just think it's ridiculous and then you have men who instead of trying to like go to bat for us and help us out feel more personally attacked and even though they're not maybe like actively contributing to the disparity aren't doing a whole lot to address it with their dude bros that are being total jackasses. Right. And so I think that kind of is like a doubling down for women to be like, we can't take you seriously. 
So I could see how men would see that as feeling like they've been taught to be of less worth, but I think it's more of like a, uh, there's a Facebook group called something about like men seem to be confused about their current market rate. And I feel like that's kind of goes back to that. Absolutely. I, I think go, going back to the part of the comment that was the, the, the res- one part of the response that you read um, where they were talking about, oh, there's commercials about like men living in their mother's basements and stuff like that. Um, it, it, it goes to one of those uh, things that I always say uh, a joke is a joke and it's funny when it's a joke. But often, jokes are made on real things. Right. Stereotypes can be funny because they're ha- they're a real thing. Mm-hmm. It happens often, often enough that many people notice it, and that's why they're funny. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of men living in their mother's basements. Yeah. Now you could choose to perceive that as saving money to make a big move, or you could choose to perceive that as not doing anything with their life. It's going to be very contextual and very specific to the person. But if the joke that a, a commercial, let's say, is trying to make is that dude is yeah. not doing anything with his life and he's living in his mother's basement, that's a good vehicle. Mm-hmm. Dude is living in his mother's basement. More often than not, the assumption is that he's probably not doing much with his life. Yeah, I mean, and I think it depends on it's very um, contextual versus, like you said, are they living in their parents' basement or their old room because they're saving money because the economy sucks and they lost their job? Are they living with them because they do want to get like a bigger, nicer house at some point and so they don't feel that they need to be paying rent? But the question is, are they just leeching off of their parents? Right. Or are they like being an, a productive member of that household and just happen to be living at home? Right. Um, let's see what else. So yeah, we kind of touched on this just now too. Do you think advertising, uh, what was this? Do you think advertising skews towards portraying men as inept or stereotypically such as being into video games, living in their parents' basements? No, I mean, I I don't watch TV. Mm -hmm. The TV that I watch, uh, is on online mm-hmm. and online ads are geared towards what you like. Right. So I guess if you're watching a lot of TV without personalized ads, it's possible there are commercials out there like that. Um, I genuinely can't think of a time I've seen a commercial that like skews towards presenting a man as being inept. So I think he said the, the guy who commented in on my post, he brought up the example And it's just one example, but I've seen other stuff too, so I can, I wouldn't necessarily say that it was completely stereotypical or that you see it all the time, but he's seen it enough that he's perceived it and other men have to be too and women as well. So there's something to be said for that is that um, I think there was a commercial for either some type of electronic device or internet service or something where it showed a woman was looking up recipes to cook for her family The other woman was like managing her online business and then the guy was doing video game stuff. So he was kind of like, why? why?" Because, well, if anything, that is, if anything, that is, uh, that is maintain, wow, that's, that's sad. If anything, that is maintaining an existing uh, 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 kind of, trope stereotype whatever you want to call it that men play video games and women don't yeah <laughs> true true if anything all that's doing is reinforcing that yeah. video games are for for guys i think another example he gave was that they will some of these commercials show um men being inept at household chores such as cooking or doing the laundry and he was saying that a way to like build up men to show a better example would be not that oh, ha, 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 this guy, like, threw in reds with whites and didn't know any better, and now everything is pink, it would have been a better situation for a man for a man to be like, I like to use Tide because it gets my clothes cleaner because I know how to do this. Kind of, basically. Uh, yeah, but then... then... Okay, so there, I see two sides to that. The one side would be that would that particular approach would neutralize any gender uh gender skew to Mm -hmm. the idea of laundry right um because if the commercial is effectively the same and you just sub the guy and the the girl 
back and forth. Right. And it doesn't matter who sees it. Um, you're just normalizing that everyone does laundry. Right. Um, so I, I can see that and that makes sense. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily building men up. Uh, I think it just normalizes that like it, it's not a woman's job to do laundry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do not like that, that that's brought up. I totally have seen those commercials. Yeah. Rem- but like that was again, how long ago? You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about when I was watching TV. So, I mean, like, I think some of that 10, 20 current. years ago. Like. Well, but I also think some of the expectation, though, is that, you know, I don't assume that every man doesn't know how to do laundry, but I know that a lot of men... That's a safe bet. But, but I do know a lot of men that do know how to do laundry, but they still expect that once they're in a relationship, the woman's going to take over. Yeah, I lost that bet, guys. Um... Yeah, no. Now we're kind of both bad at we, it. Yeah, we just, it gets cleanish. There's definitely a mountain club. You kind of handle your stuff. I handle my stuff. And But part of the problem with that is that, like, for the most part, uh, I guess, like, stereotypical men wear, let's say, T-shirts and jeans, stuff that's, like, you can throw it in the wash, you can throw it in the dryer, you don't have to think a whole lot about yep. it, whereas women tend to have more diversified wardrobes 100 percent. what did i melt of yours did i melt something oh yeah i melted something yeah something that so shouldn't that's have gone to dry. why you basically do your laundry <laughs> we, yeah, exactly do we mine. don't we don't really make considerations about like about no. that, that but that's also speaks to a different different uh subject d- different tangential subject yeah this. um no i i don't think commercials are inherently skewed towards making men appear inept or yeah I also, I personally have noticed, um, if anything, I felt like commercials have gotten better about showing men in caring uh, situations. I, so, like, I've I've done a lot of um, online focus groups where I have to give my opinion about commercials and different stuff like that. And a lot of times what I will specifically point out is that I am always appreciative of when they show um men in nurturing uh situations with their children especially when it's like just the man and the kid and there's no, and it doesn't necessarily show that it's a single father or whatever but it just happens to be you know a father is showing his child how to make pancakes or a father is sitting down with his uh daughter and doing a tea party or that the father is doing the laundry and so i didn't used to hardly ever see those commercials i've been seeing them more and I've been, anytime I see them, I specifically make it a point to tell whoever is asking me my feelings on it that I'm glad you're doing this because this is something that should be seen. Yeah. I mean, it makes more sense. I think I, I've, in reality, there is just more examples of both men and women being kind to their children, taking care of their families. Right. So like. Um, let's see. So this is a personal question. Do you take issue with me? Average. (laughs) Average. (laughs) Do do you take issue with me highlighting your shortcomings or ignorance on certain situations in the GD Dalibor posts? Fuck no. This shit's funny as hell. Because I think that's just, that's the nature, that's the nature of humans. Like, we're... We are all dumb about some shit. Yeah. I post WTF Erica. I don't post it That's very... That's what I said. I don't post it very often, but like... Yeah. You say but some you shit that I'm just like, what the anyway. fuck are you talking about? I also was... I also pointed out that I feel like... Um, I mean, there are some things that I make fun of that are kind of stereotypical gender roles between what you and I talk about, but for the most part, they're very like... They're not gender specific. And, and, I, and if I were with a woman, I feel like I could easily swap out gd whoever if they were to say or do some of the things you've done if i were if if you had a a woman that was like me she would be impossible (laughs) she would definitely get a lot of a lot of shit on the internet about being too bossy and too bitchy (laughs) because i've said some shit on the internet that people like calmly address me Right. I feel like if, if the shit I have said, just in je- <laughs> like on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you'd have dudes just coming for necks. Yeah. Do you... Okay, what was the next one then? Um, because there are certain things that you've told me you don't want me to put online, and I try to be very respectful of that. Um, but of the stuff that I have put online that jokes about our situations, typically about stupid stuff you've said or done, do you find any of them sexist or degrading? 
personally. No. <laughs> what? No. No. Uh, as as a as a as a uh, as the least uh, least held down category of human being on the planet, the straight white cis male in America. Uh, I don't think I get to find anything sexist for myself. Like I, I don't think I, I don't think I have the I don't think I have the the point of view uh, to to be able to find you don't anything. Have the credentials. Yeah, I don't have the credentials <laughs> to be able to say that sexist towards if anything said towards me. Do you do you think that the stuff that I say or put out um, gives like a bad impression or could hurt other people? No. No, because that's, I'm trying to think, like, I'm just trying to think of, like, a few examples of the stuff that you've posted, and it's, as far as I can think, it's always been something exclusively just dumb. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with male or female, it had not, like, it just was dumb, like, a dumb thing I said or a dumb thing I did. Yeah, because, like, I do think that the stuff you put out there can um, strengthen or normalize or maybe question what is considered normal. Of course. Um, so if there are people who would want, I guess, traditional gender roles, if I were to make fun of you about, I guess, cooking or cleaning or whatever, they could take that, I guess, as a an assault to the, I don't want to say the norm, but like their ideas, I suppose. Or could possibly give women ideas of how they could talk to their men. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whatever shall we do? Uh, I mean, I guess I could see how... I guess I could see how someone could potentially take something you've said. Because I, like, I guess I, I, I can... I genuinely can't think of a single, like, tangible example of shit you posted. We'd have to, we'd have to, go, we'd have to go through the hashtag. Uh, but, like... It, it's very much a situation of if it has been something that like about cooking or about cleaning, which I'm sure I'm sure there has been. I'm sure. Uh, what, did, what did I use? Or there's probably been jokes about like you know I'm the man and I make the decisions or yeah. you know stuff yeah. like that. Uh, but I think th- I also think that or like when I say like I could replace you, <laughs> that's, that's dangerous. Tr- that's true for everybody. <laughs> that's true for everybody. Yeah. Nobody should ever feel safe in their relationships. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. I mean, I feel like with a lot of the posts, it's kind of like, uh, I don't think that people should be mean for the sake of being mean, but I also think that you should call people out on their bullshit. So of course, I don't have a problem. Like, I think like, you know, there are some men who feel like my wife should support me. She shouldn't question me or if she does, she should do it gently. Whereas, like, you know, I will come to you and be like, you know, I think you're really acting like a fucking asshole. I don't know why you're gaslighting me about this specific thing. Can you not? I won't lie to you. I hate that term. I know you do, but it's a term. Because it's... But I gave you the example of why it was, and it was. Um, I No, I get that. I I just think... I I just hate that term because it it is an unnecessarily escalating term. I suppose. I think it is... It is a... It is a... Just like racism, mm. I think as a term, it is it, it escalates things to a, to a, to a level that makes people defensive. Uh, and when I hear that, I have an instinctive feeling yeah. of I want I need to fight whatever's being said. See, and then yeah. I, I and I so then it, it just essentially puts more work on me tonight to not just get into a fight over whatever was just yeah. said, as opposed to. Why are you saying this? Like, this is, like, you are... Because, like, w- when we discussed... Because, um, remember, you, you were caught off guard. Because I remember you posted this. This is the <laughs> thing you posted. Yes. Because you, you, like, challenged me about the, the, the COVID thing. Uh, and then you, you were like, why are you gaslighting? Why are you gaslighting? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And we got into an argument about it. Yeah. And then the next time we talked about it, you just said what it... What you, like, what you were feeling. Yeah. And I was just like, I didn't make it, I didn't mean to, like, that's not, that was not my intention. I don't want, want you to feel that way. Right. And you were caught off guard because you were ready for a fight. Yeah. Because you didn't start with, 
this grandiose thing. That's why that's why I always say like you can't call somebody a racist because then you're attacking their very fabric of being and they need to defend against that. Yeah. That's an instinctive. That's a gen- like I I'm be very honest with you. When you say gaslighting, I have like a visceral like I'm ready to fight. See, and so like, and me, I need to fight that. I feel like using terms like gaslighting and racist are the easiest way to encompass what you're going to discuss about why what your issue is is problematic. And so when a person gets more defensive about the use of the word gaslighting or racist, I'm like, why are you angry about this but not about the thing that's actually the problem? Because it's not being addressed. I guess. So. <laughs> um. <laughs> This is going to be a really loaded question. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um, do you feel I'm not supportive of you? Um, Don't answer it too quickly. Um, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> just, just have some more water. Gather your thoughts. <laughs> uh so full transparency, I definitely absolutely brought this up in a therapy session that we went to once. Uh, verbatim. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think support takes different uh, different appearances. That's not the word. Like I know there's a term for that. Like there's different ways to show support. Yeah, there's different ways to show, show support. Um, it depends. Uh, I think it. I think you are supportive from an ultimate goal kind of perspective. Uh, I think you are. You want me to produce the best kind of shit that I'm producing. Mm-hmm. So whatever I'm doing, um, you want it to be the best from your perspective. Mm-hmm. And I think that often turns into a lack of support because <laughs> it's not the same vision exactly uh like take for example i wanted to i wanted to talk about this the other night when you when you when you did t- uh, you were talking shit about my video that i made by the way you still haven't watched that i know you didn't um i'll watch it baby because you because a, it's like a minute long first of all so everyone should watch it but uh i did end up cropping in and you didn't see that stuff mm. so so you could have just told me that. But that, I'm not. Uh, it, it, the point was not to explain my vision and my plan to you. You don't even know what that video was about. You don't know what I was doing in that video, because I'd already filmed most of the video. Okay. I just needed those B-roll shots. But see, that that goes back to me is because like I don't believe like I don't believe in blind allegiance and that whole like stand by your man thing. Like I do believe in support, but it always has been like conditional support. <laughs> That's terrible. No, it's not. That's I mean, terrible. No, because like, what was it? I mean, so you you are a citizen, yes. Yes. You know this, okay? I just don't want it to. Why get, are you? Why I, are you challenging I me on that? I just don't want like. Don't the, challenge me on this on the internet. Wait, who? I just don't want immigration to show up. Um, no. So like, uh, you know, because there was, you had um you had a family member that didn't have all their documents together although they also are a citizen yeah and i was like how could you not have your stuff together this doesn't make sense to me we're and you parents. and well but you didn't say anything at the time and then when we were trying to get your passport together you were like i too don't have my very crucial documents and so for me it was like I joking, I jokingly, not jokingly said that if you got deported and sent back to Bosnia, I'm not going with you. Nor should you. Oh my so God. like it's conditional. It's not a like I'm with you forever, no matter what. Like I like my life. Yeah, bitch, but you wouldn't divorce me. What? So we would just stay married? I'd be back. <laughs> okay. Also, we've been married long enough that I, I would be a citizen by... By marriage. You can't... Well, it would depend. If you were here illegally or, or you had, like, outstayed a visa or whatever, which would be illegally, you wouldn't qualify. I, there's some... There's You could probably fight it with immigration, but the... the oh, I'd fight it. <laughs> I mean, you could, but my understanding is that, yes, if you marry someone, but, like, you have to apply for the marriage thing and you have to have still been, like, within the limits of whatever document you use to come over, blah, blah, blah. So so for me, the support was, like, you know, if you needed to fight stuff, like, I'd help you fight it. I'd, I'd do that. I'd show support in other ways. But if it came down to the point of, like, you have to go to Bosnia, 
Like, I'm not going with you. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, and some people would see that as like, you don't truly love the person, but it's like, no, I have to, no, I have no. to take into consideration like my comfort and what I want as well. And yeah. so if somebody comes into a relationship and they didn't tell you things about themselves or they didn't have their shit together and now you're going through this, I don't know that you're uh, obligated to see it all the way through at your detriment. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think you're obligated to see it through. Um, this is going to be a really... This is going to be a really weird tangent, but follow me on this. <laughs> okay. Uh, somebody the other day was talking about uh, Cyclops is a terrible character, and they brought up, amongst other things that I refute, I, I spent like 10 minutes refuting this on TikTok, <laughs> with various TikToks, but he brought up his relationship with uh, the, 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 the three main women that he's been with mm -hmm. during the comic book history. And the, the comparison of of two character, two women he's, he's been with, Jean Grey, who he got married to, and then Emma Frost, which was his girlfriend after Jean Grey died. Uh, and I brought up, I'm like, that is a situation that was difficult for him to understand because he was in a situation that he had promised his heart to someone and he did not consider the possibility of being able to love someone uh -huh. else. Yeah. So like it was a like a, a conflicting emotion uh, for him, and which is the reason I bring that up is if I were to somehow be deported, uh, I would like even if I was to go to jail, any, anything that would separate us for an extreme amount of right. time, um, I, I would not be like expecting you to just like be waiting at the window for me to come back, like. Yeah. If they were like, you got to go to Bosnia, you can't come back for five years, I would not expect you to not get any dick for five years. There would be zero expectation. Why does it have to be dick? It could be or anything. vagina, whatever appendages you're looking I'm for. I'm a modern woman. You're a modern woman. <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know, whatever you're looking for. Uh, I, I would not expect, like, if I can't, if I was all of a sudden, like, was able to get back and for, I don't know, some reason didn't notify you that I was coming back, uh... I wouldn't, like, let's say I was showing up and I opened the door and I wouldn't expect there to just be you and the dogs. <laughs> I'd be like, hi, my name's Dalbor. I live here too. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's kind of where yeah. I'd be at. And I mean, that's kind of like an extreme example, but I also feel like a lot of my support is, like I said, it is conditional where like when we first met, your goal was to open a comic shop. And like, while I thought that was like cute, I didn't think it was practical. She says cute. Wow. Because I that did. was that was sexist. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I uh, I don't know a lot. I mean, compare comparatively, I don't know how many comic book shops there are that are like successful and lucrative, and people that like have their own insurance insurance and the people you know like that like i think the ratio of ones that go under or are just scraping by are way higher than the ones that are turning like a significant profit so i was like this is not a good idea and so people could see that you could even see that as not being supportive but i'm more practical i guess uh yeah i mean you're definitely a very practical person uh i think on a like i said i think your your support comes through I mean, that's actually a great example to what I said earlier. You, if I were to open a business, you'd want me to open the best, most lucrative business that I could, not necessarily like just some fun thing I want to do. Right. Uh, so it, it's very much, I mean, and it reflects in, in you know, our business. You're, you're, you're a, a board member, uh, as it were, at Nexus. Uh, and you, you very much are always asking about like, is this going to make us money? Like, mm -hmm. is like, is this worth our time? And I mean, your, like I said, your support comes in a very particular avenue. Like, right. uh, there is, I think, support is a very broad term, and I think that there is a lack of uh, of of granular detail to it, and I think. Life is mostly granular details. Uh, supportive, I think, would even fall into the same ideas of gaslighting and racist. It's such a broad fucking term. Are you supportive? Yeah, you 
you pay a, a you know a, a equivalent portion of the bills and you take you pay all our bills like i give you the money you pay our are you supportive absolutely you're supportive <laughs> like you do a bunch <laughs> of the shit that i don't want to do right like you i don't have to worry about bills getting paid you while i didn't even notice paid off one of the credit cards <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, because you were like, there's only, like, this much left on it. And I was like, what are you talking about? There was, like, four grand on it. Oh, look, it's under $1,000. Like, yeah. it it just got done. Like, I put on my pants and I did it. <laughs> you put on your pants and you did it. Yeah, right. I think I think support comes in different forms. So, yeah, I think you are supportive. I think it just depends. I think sometimes I do need a, uh, a little more, uh, I don't want to say blind faith, but just like uh, – I have an idea. Just let me do my thing. Yeah. Uh, like, like with the other night, you were like, this thing is in the shot. No, and I, at that point, the support I needed was for you to hold the camera and point it at the thing, not to give me <laughs> suggestions. Yeah. Let's see. I, my handwriting is terrible. So I'm trying to like discern some of this. Um, oh my God. That's handwriting. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck dude? Let me see this. No, leave me alone. Hold on. I'm trying to remember. Jesus. is that word <laughs> oh no put it in context that's what i'm trying to figure. it's so the first part of it is have you ever felt threatened or been threatened verb have you ever felt threatened or been threatened verbally or physically for ignoring someone or doing something in something inadvertently Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Have you ever been threatened or have you... Fuck. I believe in you. <sighs> Words are hard. <laughs> um, have you ever felt threatened or been threatened verbally or physically for ignoring someone or doing something incorrectly or deemed incorrectly, I guess? Yes. Hmm. Continue. Uh, uh, was it physical though? Uh, I, I was, I was, uh, I inadvertently did, uh, said something to a friend. I uh, know this was very early in our friendship. Uh, and I just, there are certain things that I don't know about certain cultures which right. is a thing um and i guess he's part italian and i said and this was a thing i used to say just like that's just a thing i used to say mm -hmm. like uh I, I was like get shot in the face because that's like a get fucked you know like the same thing oh okay you know what i'm saying like, like a go kill yourself kind of uh, thing or I've actually never told someone to go kill themselves. I haven't it's either. It's a stupid fucking thing. No, I, I just, uh, it, it was, it's like a visceral response to someone saying something you hurt, like, like disagree with on a fundamental level. Mm. Uh, and it was something dumb, of course. It was like, we we're talking about comic books or yeah. cartoons or some shit. Uh, and I was like, get shot in the face. Like, what a ridiculous... And he was like, get the fuck out of my house. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, it turned very quickly. Um, and his reaction, very visceral, was because... Uh, he's like, that's the, that's like the worst thing you can say to an Italian because, uh, that means like that if, if, if like my mother were to go to my funeral, she wouldn't be able to look at my face. Oh. I was like, Oh my God, that just went so fucking deep that like, I had no fucking clue, Yeah. but that's like the most I can think of. Well, the reason I brought that up was because, um, one of the women who commented, um, who was, uh. I don't know. You could either say it came to my defense or came to the defense of the original argument right. or, whatever, or post that I put. Sure. Had said, you had, as I said before, was kind of you can't compare men feeling bad that people are poking fun at them for, you know, doing like doing the laundry wrong when you have um, women who like if you've been at a bar and a man has approached you, um, and you have like ignored them, they've threatened to drag you into an alley and rape you. Or another example she gave was, you know, have, have, if you've ignored a person, have they ever like broken a beer bottle next to your face demanding that you give them attention? 
And one of the other examples she gave, which I wasn't sure if it was a personal example or not, but um, from what I know of her, it seems like it could have been, was that she was, um, she was uh, I think she said, yelled at or threatened for uh, allegedly doing the dishes incorrectly. So it's kind of like these are things that women experience pretty regularly. Like I, for example, uh, had an ex who put his hands on me because I dared to um, call him out on something he was incorrect about. I think it was like we'd gone somewhere and I made a comment about a friend we had and he was like, no, you're wrong. It's actually this. And I said, no, I don't know why you think that. I know this to be different, which means that either like this is what I know or they're lying to one of us, but like this is what I've been told from them. So you can't tell me I'm wrong. And then they didn't want to let me back into the apartment. And when I tried to get back into the apartment, they pushed me because I told them that they were wrong about something. <clears throat> I also have a very visceral reaction to that kind of bullshit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that, uh, that is never a situation I've been in. Uh, I have never been threatened uh, for anything so silly as that. Yeah. Uh, and that's not to say that men aren't threatened for that, but I think the... I, I think, not as often. Yeah, I think I think that goes into into the... That, what I mentioned earlier, the concerning kind of movement amongst very young women uh, to, like, beat their men. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. That that that's that that might fall into that and I'm not I'm not saying that there aren't men who are experiencing it. Um but like the difference is fundamental. Um it's it's the difference is so vast that like the the um like I don't think that there is a woman that I know that hasn't in some way been threatened or harmed due to the actions of a man. Right. Directly. Uh and I no one, no, two men mm -hmm. amongst all the men that I know who have had the same experience. Yeah. I think part of that, too, is that when you get into the disparity between um, financial stuff, like, so, for example, that would be, like, a key example of, like, why women wouldn't want to put up with men's bullshit. Like, after an experience like that, I was single for a while, and the only reason that I didn't leave sooner was because I wasn't in a financial position to do so. That's a terrible place to be in. Yeah. I've been there. And I wasn't as badly off as a lot of other people are, so um, that sucked. But do you think it's more important to point out that not all men are the way women get angry about men being? <laughs> Or to work on addressing those issues. Ah, fuck. Let me start that over. Do you think it's more important to point out that not all men act in the way that women find repulsive, I guess, or uh, possibly dangerous? Or to work on addressing those issue issues internally or calling out others' bad behavior, other men's bad behavior? Uh, I think there is only one right answer to that. <laughs> uh, I. I It's that there isn't more uh, checking. Like, sometimes you got to check dudes. Mm -hmm. And that there isn't more of that happening. Like, I've, I've seen, there's been a couple movies. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I've seen, I've seen a couple examples in fiction uh, where, like, you know, a group of friends finds out Billy's been hitting his wife uh, and they give him the business. Right. They take care of it. Um, and that's the kind of shit I would like to see. Like, you like beating on women? Let's see what happens. Yeah, see yeah. How, see how it feels. Like, I would I would like to see that. Like, right. I, if, if, you know, if it's a verbal thing, 
that needs to be a conversation. That needs to be a conversation. Like I, I'm thankful that I am, uh, that I am friends with men who don't do that. <laughs> right. Uh, and I am, I'm thankful that I have not had to do anything about that because like I said, I have a very visceral reaction to that. Uh, and that probably would end very bloody. Yeah. I think, um, I think part of the problem is that a lot of men assume that if they don't do it, like they're doing what they need to, Yep. like like bare minimum, or even like, for example, um, you know, are they like the, the guy who commented on my post was like, you know, I'm trying to show my son, like what I expect of relationships. Um, I think it can't just be about you talking to your son or happening to be nice to your wife or talking to your daughter about these things. It needs to be a, are you checking other people? Yeah. Are you like, what, what actions are you doing that don't immediately affect your family members that you care about? It, yeah, it, it very much, uh, it goes to the thing I told you when you had that situation at work at the Christmas party, Mm. uh, I told you. Don't get into too many details. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I told you, um, you know, situation that I'm not glad I was there. Yeah. Because uh, I would have fought that dude if it came down to it. And that's the problem. <laughs> is that, like, I feel, I look back on it and I wish I would have done more. But there were so many men around that saw it happening that were bigger and more intimidating than yep. me that I feel should have stepped yep. up. Yep. And that's not to say that I feel like I have to have a man have my back or anything, but I do th- like I know of I've heard of women even who were like in the military, don't take shit kind of women, who have been like, you know, I've t- I've done hand to hand combat, I don't take shit from anyone typically, but when they've been put in a compromising situation, I guess the fight or flight kicks in, and they like just can't they can't do anything and they beat themselves up over it. And it shouldn't be a them problem because it was very much a, the aggressor problem. Um, but that's just how it is for a lot of people. No. Yeah. It, it, it very much needs to be a, a self policing situation. Um, yeah. Whatever, whatever the first part was where, what was the, the first part of the question? Um, like, do you think it's more important to to try and, like, be like, not all men act like no, that? No, I, fu- I fucking hate that shit so much because that's just as bad as not all white people are racist. Right. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Who fucking cares? And I do think his point, <laughs> I mean, his points were important about that, you know, their, their um, toxic masculinity is, like, ingrained and it can be hard for some people to get over it and... You know, there are situations where women are, um, can be more rude than they maybe need to be in regards to people, but that's also a personality thing. Like that's not all women. Um, and just, uh, I don't know. So like, I do see those things need to be addressed, but it kind of gets into the, like, you know, we can work on addressing all of them, but I think if you if we focused more on not getting to that point, we wouldn't have to, we even have to worry about the, I'm terrified of men. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's, that's, that's such a silly, that's such a silly thing to, to even consider. Like, oh, you feel bad because people are, are, are making you feel a certain way. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, like anybody that says not all men, uh, just find their posts where they're being disparaging to women because there are posts. Yeah. And just be like, not all women. I just, and just it, be like, not all yeah. women. And just walk away and let it fucking play to out. To me, it just seems like, weird, too, that anyone would even... And I think he's coming from a good place, but just to have the audacity to not all men in 2021 was like, have you been listening to anything? <laughs> this not is all not men, the time Not all place. white people. Like, not all cops. Yeah. It's all the same dumbass fucking argument. Sure, not all, but who fucking cares that it's not all of them? There's enough. Cool, cool. There's a hundred people that do this, and it's too many. And 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 there's a hundred, you know, there's a hundred people that are of this group, and ninety-seven of them do it. Yeah, it's not all, but that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Too many. 
Um, okay, uh, this one's a little bit loaded too, kind of, sort of. Um, I'm trying to think if I need to like um, give any background to this. But I'll just I'll just say it, and if you need any explanation, I can give it. Sure. How do you feel about the shift towards women being more powerful, or just like having more uh, autonomy, I guess, or authority? Just in general, women have taking up more space and being more part of the conversation and not settling, like all those kind of things. Like, how do you feel about the shift towards more powerful women, and do you believe it comes at the expense of showing men as less powerful? Uh, to the second part, no. Uh, just a flat out no. Uh, to the first part, uh, I'll have to tell you, I, I have had a very difficult time with like the the wealth gap or the uh, the, the the pay gap, or the gender pay gap, and that idea of like women not being powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a very difficult time of perceiving that because. In my work, in my jobs, more often than not, I have been subservient to women. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like two, three, four managers up, we're all women. Yeah. So to me, like at Target, we had two managers that were men, all the other managers were women. Mm -hmm. So like for me, it has never been a situation, and like the area manager was a woman. So like the store manager was a man, right. but the air, but his boss was a woman. Right. So like, and like all of all, like the three area managers that work with her were also women. So like for me, you know, when I was at Radio Shack, area man, the district manager was a woman. Uh, like it, for me, it's always very much been a lot of women in positions of power. But I suppose positions of power don't automatically mean that things are equal. Because, for example, like while you had three managers above you that were women, we don't know if they were or weren't getting paid more or less than if a man had been in that same position. I'll be honest with you. We got a second guy. And I've told you this before. We got a second guy in. It was, very, it was like a 23-year-old dude. I think I was 25 at the time. And I was mad because he was right out, of, right out of college. He came out of business school, had zero retail experience, and he was my boss, and I was mad as fuck because I had management experience before that. Uh, I would have choked him to death if he was getting paid more than the other managers at his level yeah. who were women. I would have choked him out personally. <laughs> um, I just kind of feel, I personally feel like um, a lot of men tend to... But not all men. <laughs> I feel, not all men. <laughs> I feel like a lot of men uh, say they want a powerful woman or like an assertive woman, but that there's always like an asterisk, and it's like, but not too much. Dude, we have a perfect example. <laughs> uh, I won't call him out by name because he might watch this. Uh, but uh, my good friend, uh, for ages, was looking for a independent like intelligent woman uh and then he found one and he didn't know what the fuck to do with at her. one point <laughs> at one point really wanted to to get with a doctor she was like a full-on medical doctor uh and she was just not given the time of day because she's better than him i mean there's just no way around that like she was better than him uh he was beneath her and he is now uh engaged to a, a pharmacist uh and he still is making their relationship uh, uh, uh conditional on her being able to produce children fucking ridiculous fucking ridiculous i would agree i think men are genuinely terrified uh, of actually powerful women uh because it calls into question their value in the relationship mm -hmm. Uh, so to be, uh, especially if you are someone who, like our friend, has uh, defined themselves by their um, financial capabilities and their their business acumen, um, if you get into a relationship with someone who is that 
essentially that doesn't need you. Yeah. Uh, what is your value? Right, right. If you if 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 they get into a situation where they're with someone who is in a position that just they they literally are not needed, uh, then they question their value because they have been conditioned and or they just have have learned to believe that their value is X, and now X is filled. The fuck are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> like. I think um, it kind of comes down to a lot of uh, people who say that they want like a woman who's assertive and powerful are like they might be okay with a woman who has a career, but they would expect that she give it up if they had something come up that they deem to be more important. Or just like in Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. That was a good movie. Um, or there's the expectation that, like, I think there are plenty of mothers who can have careers and children, and they will often have other people help raise their children, and people will look at them as being, like, less of a woman or, like, not a good mom. And I think that there are some people who maybe should consider whether or not they're going to have children if they're not going to make, like, any time for them or give the children what they need. Of course. But I just, I feel like a lot of, guys are kind of like oh that's cute you have your job until you do the job i think you should right or you know if they're made or if the man is making like poor decisions or something like if the woman starts expecting more of them or calling them out on it they get very uh i guess defensive and i don't know what you know it yeah i think i think it very much falls into uh the, that idea that you brought up earlier where the, the conditioning of men to like believe they have a certain role that they need to fill and and believing that a woman has a certain role to fill yeah and regardless of what they want and what they need and what they're doing like once once that relationship exists mm -hmm. they will just like fit into those roles right but like i know lots of women who aren't great cooks or in a lot i know lots of women who refuse to cook like they just right. aren't interested in it it's not a thing they they want like so well, yeah. like it, it's it is uh it is a thing that is looked at on a very broad scale and i think it's even taught and and conditioned on a broad scale but in reality it's a very much an individual thing like there are lots of women who want to be homemakers and raise children Lots of them. Mm -hmm. But there are also lots of men who want to do that. Right. There are also lots of individuals who don't want children. Yeah. It, it, there is just a wide variety of human beings. And I think we, we look at and we're taught to look at these roles and these relationships in a very general, broad term based on old school, like religious and old, like cultural perspectives. Right. It just is what it is. Yeah. I think part of the problem arises too is that um, you might have a lot of women who want to take on traditional uh, gender roles, but it just is not feasible because we're now in the type of economic situation where for the most part, like both partners have to work. Yeah. And so it, it could, it couldn't, it, blah, blah, blah. Um, it might not be just that they're not good cooks. It could just be they didn't have the time to learn. Yeah. They had to, they had to contribute. They had to contribute in their family. Mm -hmm. When they were a child, they had to go out and get a job to help pay the bills. Right. And then now they have to contribute. Otherwise, they're going to lose their home. But you still have a lot of men who, despite their wife working a job as well, still expect her to pick up all the additional slack of chores. Yep. Um, I think one of the other issues you run into as well is that um, if you are in a position where the husband can go to work and could provide financially so that the wife could stay home and be a stay-at-home mom, um, they still look down on her because she's not bringing in financial wealth, I guess. Like, it doesn't matter that she's cooking and cleaning and watching the kids, which are both of your kids. Yeah, and they but, use that against know, her. They, yeah. they, they hold it over her. Like, I pay the bills. Yeah. It's my house. Or even they don't take into consideration the fact that, you know, I guess it's a little bit different because if you got sick at your job, if you got tired of doing your job, I can't, like, fill in for you. It's a little bit different in a home, but a lot of partners will look at it and be like, 
well, you shouldn't complain because that's your job. You chose this and they won't go out of their way to consider, you know, this typically woman has been making the food every day. Right. Maybe I could help her out. She might be stressed out. She had, you know, like, even though I'm working, I still get to have like my official lunch break. I still get to maybe go have lunch with my coworkers on my off time. I get to walk away and maybe have like a 15 minute break to dick around and do what I want. And stay at home moms don't necessarily get that. They're on duty the whole time and it's more than 40 hours and that's not considered. And I think that that's a problem as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You have, and even in a situation where kind of everybody's right now working from home, you have situations, little situations, little things. Uh, we have a recent example of uh, there being uh, one less mug ready for hot chocolate than there are people in the house. Yeah. Just a lack of consideration. Right. That's an example. Just like a little, little, even little things. And that's not even taking, taking the kids for a day, if you will, or taking, you know, taking over the chores for a week or whatever, just to help your partner out. That's just a really simple, basic consideration. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, pe- people people are gonna. It, it, it's people fall into these gender roles, and I think it just makes it easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, once you generalize things, it is easier on one end, but on the other end, it's it's, it's very very damaging. Right. Um, it, it just yeah, it's um, rough. I think I had one more question, and okay. then we can round this out. Um, do you think that women rally around and support other women more than men support other men? I have, I actually have a lot of thoughts on this. (laughs) Can you get those thoughts down in under 10 minutes? Uh, I have, (laughs) I, 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 we could even have another discussion about that. Absolutely. I can. Absolutely. I can. Uh, I think, uh, Yes, but primarily uh, superficially. Okay. Uh, I think women do a lot of play acting, uh, especially now in the internet age of support and, you know, yay women and all this stuff. Uh, but then there is there is a lack of action to back up the words and the statements and the, the, the acting. Um, I think men, on the other hand, often don't, do a lot of acting, but then do a lot of the action in support of each other. Um, because uh, I think there is a perception that we don't need to, we don't need help defending ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when it's something that would perhaps could be served by another guy coming in and saying, hey, I have also seen this situation. I have also experienced this, etc." cetera. Right. That we don't do that. I think that there's we have a perception of he's got it. He'll take care of it. Like we just expect that other men can take care of themselves. Yeah. Um, And that's where you also get a lot of situations of white knight syndrome where, where guys come in to try to defend women Mm -hmm. um, even when they're not asking for it or don't need it (laughs) very often. I feel like Um, a lot of times men come in to like help when it's, it's like, we need you to help with this other thing. And they're like, but yeah, yeah. (laughs) chivalry. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, and then I, I, th- I think I see a lot of, a lot of women kind of, you know, going to bat online and say, oh, you know, believe all women and all this other stuff and all this other stuff. Uh, but then that like falls apart very quickly. Mm-hmm. The, the slightest hint of maybe this was not the right position to have, or maybe this person did also do something bad. Right. Um, it, it, it falls apart very quickly. Uh, an example uh, I mean, it's not a great example, honestly, but it's like the uh, the Amber Heard situation uh, and Johnny Depp. Mm-hmm. Uh, she accused Johnny Depp of domestic violence. Right. He had recordings of her admitting to being domestically violent. Now, obviously, that is not the full story. That right. is just those recordings. But from what it seems like, she was the aggressor. Yeah. Uh, and it was a lot of support, back her up, blah, blah, blah. And then instead of saying, let's get all the facts, it was cut off. Mm-hmm. No, no one had anything to say about her. No one had, any, and, and she might still be, she, he might still have 
hit her. We, we right. don't know. We don't know all the details, of course. Uh, and effectively, she did uh, She did win the case, which I thought, I don't know how you win with tapes like that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, but situ- situation, granted, that's a, like I said, it's a very extreme case, but like you have situations where women have a position, a lot of women back them up in that position, and then it, even if there is like a, a hint of this was not the right position, right? the support just washes away. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of the difference. And I think, uh, I think in reality, I think in, in the real world, you have a lot of uh, women supporting each other uh, on a very small scale. Right. Um, but I also see a lot of situations where you have women uh, being extremely judgmental of each other and extremely, um, and, and it's for all sorts of reasons. Right. Stuff stuff that men never talk about, stuff that men don't care about. Right. But women will call out other women for behaviors or clothing or whatever, whatever, what, like all of these like granular things to also maybe like feel better about themselves or it's usually what it is when people call out other people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it's, yeah, it's a kind of a mixed bag. I just think, um, I feel like a lot of it's, um, like socially ingrained. They've done a lot of studies with this where they show that like, even if women are in positions of power, they're often less likely to promote other women. Um, just because they either look at them negatively because of a lot of things that have been ingrained by society or they view them as a potential threat. Uh, just because it kind of is like a, I, I suppose the argument could be like, well, I'm a woman in a higher position and I might have been given this as like a token to a degree so that the company can look like they're forward moving and, you know, right. diversified. And so I'm worried, like, because I'm the woman and this woman could try to be the woman. Um, Yeah, and that's sad. That's sad for sure. I think part of it, too, is that they've done studies that show um, people tend to drown out women's voices more. And it seems to be partially a subconscious thing, is that just because women's voices tend to be calmer and softer... It's just kind of easier for people to drown them out. Whereas if a man's speaking, people pay more attention. And that's not uh, inherently a societal thing, but it plays into it. And so I think part of it, too, is that um, some of the things I've been reading have suggested that a lot of times if a woman comes up with an idea, it has to be repeated a couple times before it's taken seriously. And so they've suggested that, uh, like, amplification where if a woman says something and it kind of gets glossed over that another person say going back to that woman's point i want to second that or um you know sometimes uh men will take well they're like they will have heard it but they just kind of ignore it but then they like act like they came up with the idea and so you need other women to be like that's what she just said five minutes ago um, so I think that's maybe part of it is that women have become accustomed to trying to like amplify each other. Um, and also I think part of it is that, um, I guess, and you could argue again that it's maybe because men aren't encouraged to get into their feelings and discuss those things. Women tend to be more open with other women about problems. And so they maybe have like a better knowledge of what's going on or have felt it or have, found out that other people are experiencing it, whereas men might keep it bottled up. And so then there's maybe not as much of the camaraderie, I guess. Yeah. Um, what's funny is you brought, you pointed that out to me before the, the, the amplification thing. Uh, and I not like, it wasn't something that I like put time into be like, I'm going to do this, Mm -hmm. uh, but I just found myself doing it. Uh, I had, you know, I had a couple, uh, you know, meetings and stuff at work. And I would say, Oh, like I, I completely agree with what, you know, Sarah or whoever said, mm-hmm. um, it just, it made more sense. Cause to me, it's like, it, I don't want to be the last person to have spoken. And because I was the last person to speak on a subject, like it's my idea. Mm-hmm. Like it's, if it's not my idea, it's not my idea. Like I don't, it makes sense to give credit to the person that started the, right. Like, it, it, I don't know. It, it's, 
it's silly. But no, you, I, 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 you're right. You're right. There, there is the need for women to 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 back each other up because, yes, yeah, see, I, and and that's the thing. I was I was completely looking at it from a different perspective. I was looking at it from a like a general perspective and in business, absolutely. I think there, there is a situation where you're going to have men gloss over women's ideas mm-hmm. and that just the sad truth, but right. So that, those were all my questions for today. Those were all your questions. <laughs> Jesus, dude. If you want to, you can go on my Facebook page. It's not public, but you or anybody who's friends with me can go on my Facebook page and see the original post in the comments. And I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to take add it. anything you want to or I'm whatever. Gonna have to take I'm so interested. I'm so interested to see who this was. Yeah, but I just thought it was interesting on the fact that uh, well, you know well. he he felt the need to address it but then also called you in and so it sort of seemed like a trying to stick up for you but also like he was offended by it even though it had nothing to do directly with him so I was wondering what your thoughts on those things were because yeah yes that's very so, this has been my TED talk <laughs> thank you for joining I want to see I want to see who it was. I'm so curious. Well, don't. Name oh, names. I don't even. I don't even know that person. Like <laughs> I know of him, but yeah. like I don't even know that person. I even the guesses I had after he said that he had a son, I my guesses were still wrong. <laughs> Jesus, I'm glad at least that the people I know of don't at least didn't say anything. I don't know if they don't think this way. No, it's it's it's. Man, like I said, that, that's the exact reason why I didn't comment anything. Yeah. Uh, because I think that is a point that is valid in and of itself. And I think we as a society have a very, very big inclination to like give our two cents on right. fucking everything. Even if that two cents maybe deserves its own time. Right. Like, well, because like one thing that I've been hearing a lot of people have been having problems with recently, which is a separate issue, but similar, is that um, now that people are... Um, bringing, I don't even want to say bringing to light or focusing more because there's been a shift. There's definitely been a shift, but as far as um, uh, race goes, especially with black people, specifically, um, a lot of... You got like quiet for the word race? I was trying to think of like how, I was going to say like race relations, but I don't think that's necessarily the right word. Um, I don't know what the right word is. Discrimination. Discri- yeah, sure. Discrimination. So... Um, so now that a lot of people have kind of been doing like performative acts of let me, f- and it's not to say that those acts don't help, but they're not necessarily the ones that need to be done or would be the most beneficial. So for a lot of people, you know, they might have been like, oh, we're highlighting black owned businesses. Right. And a lot of black people have been like, I mean, that's nice, but you should have been doing that all along and it's kind of weird that you're like only doing that now when it should just be like normal and organic, I guess. Um, And so, but what the point I was getting at is that a lot of white women have been coming into spaces and arguing the way that like black people should be approached or treated. And there's been a lot, and black people are not a monolith. So there's been a lot of black people that have come on and been like, I don't agree with that or actually this has been my experience or whatever. And then the white women are just talking over them Yep. and it's like, okay, it's great that you're trying to help, but you're not like, you're not listening to us. Exactly. That that's yeah. That's, that is exactly the point. It's, it's the, they're not participating in the conversation. They're just saying things Mm -hmm. that they believe are true. So that's exactly what this comment was. It, It wasn't part of the conversation. It was like, yeah, but have you heard about this other thing? Right. And that's that's kind of what it was. And that's exactly why I didn't want to bring up. While I think my my comment is more on the more in the same realm, uh, and it does not necessarily truly detract. I think it's just a like I said, I think everyone needs to be conditioned to be kind and yeah. soft to people and soft to each other. So like I just think that's that needs to be the general state of being, not like one gender or another. Uh, I think that's still, 
is not the point. Yeah. And thus why I didn't comment. But at the same time, it was one of those things where I didn't, I definitely didn't want to delete it. I was hoping he wouldn't delete it because I, you know, a lot of people like to dirty delete stuff when they get called out on something. But, yeah. But it was like a, it was a good point. I mean, he has a point. I don't agree with everything he said. And I think some of it he took more, I, I felt he was taking things more personally than you would, but I also wanted to check with you. Because uh, I yeah. guess I don't really like, I don't like sit down and have a quarterly meeting with you about like, have the things I've been posting online <laughs> made you feel a certain way? Uh, I think, um, I, I think it's, I think it's really just a matter of, uh, like, that's actually a really great point. That's, he's taking it very personally. Mm -hmm. So that maybe sounds like there's something he would like addressed at home. Maybe. Uh, I, I'm just guessing here, but that's just kind of what it feels like to me. When somebody kind of reacts the way that, that he did, uh, maybe there's just a conversation that needs to be had at home. Maybe he feels like he's not being appreciated. Um, cause more often than not this kind of behavior and just really, I think most people generally are not as altruistic as this comment seems to be trying to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I just generally don't think that this is like a selfless thing. Like, oh, I'm just seeing this out in the world. Yeah. I think that there's something not being re discussed or resolved at home right maybe i yeah originally i was thinking i was just gonna do like whip out my camera and be like how do you feel about this one thing but then when <laughs> i sat down and thought about it i was like there's a lot of deep questions here so i yeah. wanted to discuss this with you so thank yeah. you for taking the time happy to happy to to do it happy to do it always maybe i'll cook you dinner now hey <laughs> Maybe I cook Thank you dinner. Thank <laughs> you for joining. This went longer than expected, as they always do. But how, how we we j just shy of two hours. Okay, just shy Fine. of two hours. Fine. You can watch it in increments. It's a lot. We could do we could do clips. We'd be like Joe Jer Rogan podcast. We could. Bye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.